Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about coding boot camps, uh, or at least my experience with one. Uh, so I went to App Academy in, uh, this shirt is humongous, uh, I went to App Academy in winter of 2015, um, and, you know, I didn't really have, like, a coding background. I did do math in college, so uh, I have a bit of, like, a technical background, but never really anything in t coding intensive or programming intensive. Um, so I did App Academy. Um, uh, and basically, App Academy was uh, it was an interesting experience. So you know, I've I have mixed feelings about coding boot camps in general. So you know, that's what kind of why I wanted to make this video. But um, so first of all, I guess just like a rundown of like my experience, everyday experience at App Academy, and it was it was pretty simple. Um, I think it was back then it was uh, either nine or ten weeks of uh, curriculum followed by you know, indefinite amount of time of interview preparation. Um, so basically every day would start around 8 or 9 a.m. with a brief 30-minute lecture that would cover that day's material, that we're going to kind of preview what we're going to go over that day. Um, and after that lecture, um, that cohort of about like 20 or 30 people would split up into pairs. And basically for the entire day from 9 to 5, they would pair program um, following a, a curriculum that um, was that was already designed, um, and after the day, day ended, um, uh, people like we would you know people would do different things. Some people would go home. Some people would go to gym. Um, some people would study and preview the next day's materials. Um, but there's always homework too, so um, everyone had homework to do. Um, not really homework that would be checked, but it was homework that was suggested to kind of you know, increase your learning um, and to kind of allow you to, you know, soak more things in uh, from that day's uh, materials. Um, so that was kind of like the, you know, day-to-day -day of App Academy. And also each week there was uh, an assessment that covered that previous week's uh, materials just to make sure students were, um, you know, up to par. Um, and if you failed, I think either... If you failed two assessments, then you know they would ask you to leave the program because they needed to maintain you know a certain level of standard, um, and you know you didn't want to just you know coast through without learning anything. Obviously, um, so that's basically like the the uh, the structure of App Academy. So, so I'm going to talk about the uh, I want to talk about the pros and cons of attending App Academy, and I guess I can kind of generalize it to coding boot camps in general in, in general because I I imagine a lot of coding boot camps are very similar to App Academy. Um, so one of the good things about App Academy is just the culture and the, the quality of the students that you're around every day. And that can be very motivating for, you know, for a lot of people because everyone there is basically there to get, to break into the tech industry, which is, you know, not an easy thing to do if you don't have a coding background, which the vast majority of people you know, in that cohort didn't because you know why else would they just why else would they go to a coding boot camp um so everyone's very motivated everyone you know is very nice um and i think i credit that to the interview process and the admissions process they definitely look for people who are you know communicate well who are you know a pleasant people to work with um so just being surrounded by that every day uh, definitely pushes you harder um and another pro that I would say was that um, the curriculum itself, um, like I talked about earlier, the curriculum was designed by uh, App Academy. Um, and because my guess is that, well, because students follow that curriculum and that's how they learn. And, you know, it's such an important part of App Academy that they spend a lot of time and they, they're very careful with, the amount of detail that they put into that curriculum. So it's something that you can't really find like anywhere else, you know. Um, I think it might be available now online, uh, publicly available now actually. But back in the day when they were trying to kind of build up App Academy, the curriculum was, you know, it was only available to, uh, to students of App Academy. Um, so it was a very de well-designed curriculum, like we would follow it and it would, um, you know, it would work, like it would, um, I don't remember specific details, but basically, basically from my, what I remember, I remember thinking like, wow, this is like, you know, this is not just some theoretical like textbook that you, 
read like you do in college or something like it's very practical um it goes over like nuances like very well um in, in a lot of detail and it covers things that you don't normally find in like simple google search like i you probably just can't find it at all you know well you probably can but it would take a long time and a lot of like heartache so it saves a lot of time and like just kind of presenting the most applicable and practical information directly to you um um so the curriculum was a very uh you know, it was a very helpful part of App Academy. Something else that I found useful was uh, were the TAs. Um, so during my time there, there were two TAs, two or three TAs who would walk around during your day and answer questions. Um, now this was, the cohort was about 20 to 30 people. So sometimes you'd have to wait, you know, maybe a few minutes, but you know, that's never a bad thing. And the TAs were previous students and they are very they're very good communicators and they spend a lot of time answering you know the same questions over and over again so they get very good at answering the questions so chances are a question that you might have they've encountered before so they're very well prepared to answer your question um so the tas are very helpful now i do wish there were maybe uh maybe there are more tas like like i said like it's not that big a deal to wait for the tas but like um you know, like you still didn't want to like you, you because there were only two TAs. You felt this need to kind of um, not really want to ask, not really want to ask what, not not want to ask questions, but make sure that your questions are good, which is an important thing in software engineering. Like, um, you know, you don't want to just post a crappy question on Stack Overflow or an, a, an, a well not well researched question because people will just like totally shit on you, but um there's definitely that barrier to asking a question i guess but you know it was nothing it definitely didn't hinder my learning process um and when they did come around to answering questions they were very helpful lastly i think one of the one of the big things about app academy is the the whole interview process so after your nine or ten weeks of curriculum prep um everyone then kind of just goes off into their own they can kind of do their own thing uh, you're still allowed to come to the um the the classroom where the app academy is hosted but at that point you're kind of off in your own you know silo doing interview prep um and usually no matter how long that takes um you, obviously you don't want to go for years um but even if it lasts for months the tas are there to help you uh interview and they're here to, there to give you to offer you advice and give you motivation because a lot of times um, interviewing is tough in the beginning and when you encounter rejections like rejection after rejection which happens to you know most people it can be very discouraging so the TAs were very helpful they were very motivating and you know they're always there to kind of lend you an, lend an ear and um, kind of remind you that you just need to keep on going um, and so Epic has interview prep and they had also had like a curriculum for for interviewing uh, the interview prep was very solid and that kind of just falls on their business model, which was, at least when I was there, um, your tuition was based off how much money you made. So if you, I think it was like 10 or 12% of your first year salary. So they had a real incentive to, to uh, make sure that you got a job and also a high paying job. All right, so now I wanna talk about the, maybe the cons of attending a boot, coding boot camp um, or attending App Academy. Uh, and the biggest thing that comes to mind is, and this is just mostly a personal thing, um, pair programming. So I, the kind of person, when I learn, I learn best by focusing on it alone and kind of tinkering around or you know researching around and then kind of absorbing it more. And then after that, talking to other people. But with pair programming, you're, it felt like you were kind of learning on the fly. And because you're with someone else, you kind of feel this like external almost pressure to like communicate with them at all times. Um, and it was kind of like, it would kind of present this mental block, um, which would kind of hinder you from, I guess, really learning something deeply or soaking it in. So that was something that I initially struggled with at App Academy. Um, I got used to it as the weeks went on, but I never really fully adjusted. So I think paracore programming for learning new concepts and coding ideas 
is maybe not the best thing. I think it is good for actually banging out code that's not very comp- complicated or very um or very complex you know very um it's not like the it's not like some crazy like thinking involved um you know maybe just implementing an endpoint and you know sometimes something simple like that pair programming can help a lot because you know people are software engineers are very used to it and it might help to have someone there who can kind of like check your typos or whatever <clears throat> but for something more complicated especially for a first time learner at a boot camp i think that was something that was kind of a struggle for me initially because i had to balance like learning the material and also like talking to this person like basically talking to this other person at the same time and it's good that it helped me communicate technical concepts better um so that was you know that was one good thing about pair program but overall i think in terms of actually learning I think it was actually it was a bit of a hindrance and it kind of slowed down the process. Um, not that it made me like, you know, it makes you dumber or, or whatever, but it does is not as efficient, uh, in my opinion. And keep in mind, this is uh, mainly, I think, a personal decision. It varies by person to person. Some people love pair programming. I personally would avoid it if I could or not spend the vast majority of my day pro- pair programming. Um, I think when you really need to like get, put your head down and work, then in that case, pair program maybe isn't the best best thing, uh, especially for me. Um, I think in that case, it's best to like do something first. And if you really get stuck, then pair program with someone because you've already given that effort. You've already kind of put your mind in that zone. So it makes pair programming um, easier in terms of, you know, giving and receiving ideas i think ultimately at the end of the day when you're deciding whether to join a boot camp i think it comes down to you realistically looking at yourself and saying like do i have the discipline and the structure in my life to self-learn uh coding Because coding, especially in initial stages, is very difficult. It's like a new way of thinking for a lot of people. It's confusing. The a lot of documentation, like on or tutorials online, can be confusing um, because there's just so many terms that you have to Google, and you know you can go into like a you can go down this labyrinth of uh, you know trying to figure out what does this term mean, what does this term mean. And by the time you're done, you have you forgot what you were initially were even trying to figure out. Um, <clears throat> so I think, you know, if you're the kind of person who is very, I don't want you know, I don't want to say very motivated because that's because motivation is kind of like a you know a weird thing, a nebulous thing as as well, and it's harder to kind of define. But I think if you are good or you're confident that you can set a good schedule and structure for yourself and learning coding in you know, X amount of months or whenever you want to hit your goal, then I think, yeah, maybe consider doing that instead of going to coding boot camp. Because, you know, like I said earlier, App Academy does have its online curriculum. You know, bless them, they put it online. Um, and if you really... There are a lot of online resources that, you know, it still be a pain in the butt and pain in the ass to, you know, learn things, but it's a good skill to develop. You know, the whole self-learning, uh, self-learning skill is a very important thing to develop. So if you're confident in the structure and discipline that you can impose on yourself while learning coding, then yeah, consider doing that. But it's, but if you look at yourself realistically and know, oh, I'm the kind of person who, you know, I'll enjoy being in this kind of environment where everyone's pushing each other, where everyone's very motivated, everyone's kind of passionate about learning and getting a good job, then that, in that case, I think coding, a coding boot camp is a good idea. It's just a lot of money. It's, uh, you know, you know, I'm sure you know this. Um, I think last I heard, App Academy changed its tuition structure from 
percentage based of your first year salary to like a flat rate, I think a 20 some thousand dollars. So it's a lot of money. But at the same time, if you look at the grand scheme of things, say you get a hundred and hundred twenty thousand dollar job, then, you know, that definitely covers it, you know, in the first year. But at the same time, like if you, you're the kind of person who's, you know, you're very motivated, you know, more importantly that you have the habits in place to carry you to, to make you finish all these projects and learn code. Um, then I would try that route first and see how it goes for you. I think ultimately in coding, it's important to, when you're first starting off and you don't have any experience in your resume uh, or, you know, don't have any computer science background, then it's important to actually take a project from beginning to end. Um, so, and there are tons of uh, project ideas online. Um, you can find one or better yet, find one yourself um, that shows creativity um, and then code it from, you know, set up a GitHub repo, code it from end, beginning to end. And, I, you know, in my opinion, if I were an interviewer and I saw that, I would be very impressed by um, by the fact that you self-learn and finish a project just by yourself without anyone pushing you from a, like a coding boot camp. Um, because I think that demonstrates a lot of, you know, one entrepreneurship and two self learning, three, you know, um, good habits and, and motivation. If you were to decide on going the self learning route, then definitely get software engineering books. And that way, it's very easy to write spaghetti code in the beginning as a beginner. Um, basically, spaghetti code is code that is, I guess, in, in a high level, inefficient and not reusable and can be very confusing for people who do, who are trying or reading it for the first time because software engineering is as much about reading as it is about writing code that you get software engineering books written by prof like actual professionals and go comb through those books and get a sense of you know how, this is how I should write code this is how I should approach writing code and from there on from that platform you know then or in, in tandem write projects you know start writing your projects start writing your features because you can always go back and refactor and rewrite your code that you, you know your previous code um and yeah and to be honest yeah and i think that's you know that would be a very impressive thing as well um because anyone can go to a coding boot camp you sign up and then you kind of pay the money and then blah 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 whatever not 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 saying it doesn't require hard work because it, it absolutely does but there is definitely a certain amount of respect that i think should be given to folks who self-learn. All right, so that's I think that's basically all I had to say about coding boot camps. Um, if you guys have any more questions, just uh, you know leave a comment in the in the comment section.